just posted the first uh, the excerpt from the gathering up on our website, and it's everyone is very super excited about it. Good. <laughs> so, uh, tell me about what was writing the second trilogy like? Terrifying, because the first one was doing surprisingly well. I was really awesomely surprised, well, awesomely well, by how well it it was doing, which is wonderful. But I knew that I was going to be ending that trilogy and starting a new one while set in the same world, new characters. They will eventually meet up, but I am saying, okay, you really liked these uh, characters? Too bad. <laughs> I'm now I'm done with them. ending their story temporarily and giving you new your characters. So, and writing the second trilogy was then, can I live up to what they expect based on, on the first one? So terrifying. So in, in your uh, adult series, mm -hmm. you also have a host mm -hmm. of various characters of uh, supernatural types. What can we expect in your new trilogy? In the new trilogy, actually, I'm doing something different. A little spoiler for this new one is those who have read the first trilogy know mm -hmm. that it's an experiment. It was, it, it was gen genetic modification trying to reduce the side effects of being a supernatural. Right. That was called Project Genesis. Right. In book three, they hinted at other projects. Right. So this one is a different project. It's Project Phoenix. Okay. Phoenix being resurrection. So I am resurrecting extinct supernatural types. Ooh, so they like will be it. all new supernatural types from mythology and folklore, but all new to my world. I like it. Good. So when, you, when you're considering writing a new series, or I know you set most of your books in that one universe, mm -hmm. so even when you're doing that, how do you decide what creature you're going to feature? Because you have the werewolves and you have Chloe. You know, how do you, how do you pick? Yeah, for the first YA, I was picking the, the most difficult type. Normally in my other world series, I'm kind of looking more at the characters themselves rather than the types, rather than saying I want to write a book on a necromancer or a half demon. I'm saying I want to write a book on Hope. I want to write a book on Jamie. I want to write a book on Paige. So right. I'm kind of going by character and having to be careful that I don't do, say, two witches back to back. Right. So when you decided, I know that it was a big thing when you decided to make Elena the leader of the pack. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that. So yes, Elena is Alpha Elect, which means she is in line to be the next Alpha, which I'm sure she'd be a whole lot happier with if it wasn't because she's basically the only choice. <laughs> it's never quite as no. flattering. Yeah. No. <laughs> that, yes, certainly, I mean, Clay is there, but Clay would not make a good Alpha. Uh, Antonio is older than Jeremy. Carl is not yet trust trustworthy, and Nick, no, sorry, poor Nick, he's never <laughs> oh, going Nick. to be alpha material. Yeah. So she realizes that she was kind of the alpha by default, but he has been, Jeremy certainly has been training her for years, mm -hmm. and she does, I think, have the right personality. She may not think, think she does, and that's what she had to work through in Frostbitten, but I think she's got what it takes to be an alpha. So do you consider it, is it something in your mind that you're like, I want to write this kind of kick butt female character in your adult and your YA, or are you just kind of? I was thinking of it more as wanting to write capable characters, mm -hmm. whether they're men or women, but if you're looking at the uh, pro protagonist, mainly women, but capable. So you get someone like Chloe, who's small and sheltered and really couldn't kick anybody's butt. Mm -hmm. You've got to give her other other strengths. Mm -hmm. what, so she goes from being very sheltered to learning how to be resourceful, mm -hmm. how to solve problems on, on her own. And you will get those more kick butt characters like Elena, like Eve, but I'm really kind of looking at strength in, in other ways. Mm -hmm. So I always say capable characters. Mm -hmm. Well, because you don't, and especially in your YA, do you consider wanting to like inspire girls, or is that something that you just want to write a good story? I or think, both? yeah. I think I'm looking at writing a good, good story. And I'm hoping that in writing a good story, maybe they are finding things that they can, you know, relate to. I'll get emails from younger readers who say, you know, I've always felt different. Mm -hmm. I've always felt that I was different. And I've read your books and I'm thinking maybe being different isn't isn't so bad. Mm -hmm. I love hearing hearing that mm -hmm. because a lot of these, you know, why are are about alienated children. Yeah. Not teen children, but teens alienated or outsiders or they have something that makes them feel different and finding their own strength mm -hmm. and coming into their own identity issues. And every teen is going through that. And sure they may not be able to raise the dead. 
but they've got something else that makes them feel really awkward and different and maybe they're seeing some coping. I'm not intentionally putting that in, but if, if they're coming away with that, great. Yeah, I think that that's, um, we were talking in a panel about that yesterday, how um, paranormal YA in particular kind of speaks to teens who feel kind of on the outside and then the truth of it is all teens feel a little bit on the outside that there's something about them that's weird you mm -hmm. know something like that so what were you like in high school <laughs> yeah I was definitely one of the fringe I was extremely quiet mm -hmm. so I was someone who would, who would just study very hard um, Chloe in the first trilogy stutters I stutter that was a hellish thing for a shy child mm -hmm. or, ch or, or a shy teen to deal with. So yes, certainly I was, I was one of the quiet ones that probably, you know, classmates look back and say, was she in our class? So yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so if you could go back in time and tell high school age Kelly anything? It would be the same thing that I tell any teen going you know, through that. Just hold on. Just hold on. You know, things will get better. You're going to find your way and, you know, the problems you're you know, have, having now are just making you stronger. And the, every teen has those issues. And even you know, in my why I told you, Tori, who is the, you know, sort of the, you know, queen bee. Mm -hmm. She's used to being, she's smart and she's pretty and she's popular. And yet she has her own issues with her, with her mother. So Chloe coming, coming to see that this girl who would have in school been the leader of the popular girls has her own problems. And I think most teens do. When you write this next trilogy, do you know how the trilogy ends? I have a vague idea. So I kind of know where I'm going. I know I want to bring these two groups together. At this point, I think I know how it will happen. That's not necessarily how it will happen. What book are they going to meet up with the characters from the first trilogy? In? The third. The third book. So the third book would be bringing the two groups together and resolving their problems that way. So is that going to be that that sixth book technically right. is that going to be the big grand finale or is it going to go then you're going to go nine and 12 and 15 should we call Harper and ask yeah them? <laughs> yeah call call Harper please um, yeah I never want to jinx myself mm -hmm. so I never make plans past what I'm contracted I'm contracted through six so if six is what they want and if six I could I could end it in six if they say no we we would like more by that point then I have set up a big cast so I've got characters from the first trilogy, characters from the second trilogy. I can take one of those narrators and give her book seven. I can take someone like Tori or a new character from, from the second trilogy and give them a book. So I've got it set up for a bigger like series. Like spin-offs, kind of? Right, but I don't necessarily have to do that. So I will, I will know, but I still plan that, you know, yes, the, the book six will be a big meeting book and it'll resolve things for some of the characters and not necessarily for, for others.